So, what's your name? David. My name's Ricky Chapman. My name is Lee. Uh, my name is Matthias. Yeah, my name is Christian Bush. Uh, Sandy. Uh, Jeremy Mock. My name is George. Manish. My name is Chris. Daniel. My name is Sean. Fabian. Just... My name is yeah. Tim. I'm Graham. Graham Bannerman. Oh, it's me again. It's Jan. Hi, I'm Herman. Herman. And where are you from, Herman? I'm from Holland. Well, I grew up in the United States, but now I live in Hong Kong. I'm from Denmark. Uh, Southwest England. From Canada. From India. Germany. From, uh, from the UK. I'm from Australia. I'm from Canada. Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. Originally from Florida. I am from actually all over the place. From the US, from Taiwan. I'm originally from Denmark. Denmark. From France. I'm from Scotland. From London and Scotland. Uh -huh. uh, I'm from uh, from Texas and Dongguan. Do you think your media in the US is representative of what's really like in China? Well, I know that what my family thinks about what life is like in China and what real life in China is like are nowhere near the same place. Okay. And do you think Danish media report accurately about China? I think there's a lot of stuff that gets left out. Okay. Uh, yeah, definitely. There's, there's a lot of focus on some of the, the bigger negatives and less focus on the day-to-day -day experience of what life is really like. Positive yeah. things, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And do you think German media is representative of China? Do you think it, it portrays China how it is? No, definitely not. Not at all. They, they let away a lot of things. So the important things they let away, so they don't give a clear picture how it really is. They, they, mm -hmm. they are very selective in what they show. And do you think the media in the UK are accurate about their, their vision of China? I would say not. No. Okay. I, I think one of the interesting things is a lot of China reporters are not actually in China. Do you think the media in India represents China how it is, or do you think it's wrong? Uh, see, basically, I won't go into that uh, right and wrong thing. Okay. It's just uh, they are looking from a different angle, and I'm looking at uh, from a different angle, so everybody have their opinions. Do you think Australian media portrays Chinese life accurately or not? Um, I think... It's not completely accurate, to be honest. I mean, um, they're a little bit harsh. They uh, they come down on China sometimes, uh, you know, uh, yeah. a little bit too harsh. 60 minutes especially, right? 60 minutes, very harsh. <laughs> Do you think your media back home in the USA are honest about China? Uh, no comment. <laughs> Do you think Canadian media is representative of what it's like in China? Canadian media? No. No, no. not at all. And uh, media here doesn't represent what it's like in Canada at all either. Do you think your media at home is, is truthful about China? My, my what? I'm sorry? Media at home is... The media at home? No, no. I get asked every time I go back, I get asked, what's it like living in a communist dictatorship? And I'm just like, you ever been to the mall? If I ask you about British media, do you think they portray China accurately? Um, I think it has a British spin on it. <laughs> Let's say that. Back in your your original country, would you say the media there are accurate about China, or do you think they're inaccurate? Oh, I would say that well, all media are biased. Are biased. So uh, everybody looks at China with a different lens. Uh, you really don't know what it's like until you've actually lived uh, and work here. Uh, it's it's very different. It's very different than what the media puts on. Do you think Canadian media? is representative of what it's really like in China? No, I don't think so. No. And would you say Danish media is accurate about China? Not always. Not always. Not always. Okay. No, I don't think they always have, you know. China's a big country with many different things. And do you think French media portray China accurately? Uh, not really. No, really. I mean, being... I'm almost a bias a bit buying in China, so it's, uh, it's obviously I have a different point of view from France. Would you say media in your country portrays China accurately? <laughs> uh, not really. Not really. <laughs> do, 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 do they do it anywhere in the world? <laughs> do you think the media in Scotland are honest about what goes on in China? Not at all. <laughs> they, they are misled to the extreme. I wish they'd come and talk to me. And do you think the media back in your home country is truthful about China? Not at all. I'm also sitting as the Danish uh, chairman, of, uh, chairman of the Danish Chamber of Commerce, and this is the biggest problem, that there's a disconnect between the opinion in our country and the opinion about what's going on here. We're trying to connect the headquarters here with the 
what Adini said before, because there is a misinterpretation of what's going on. And how long have you lived in China? Uh, total since 2008, so whatever uh -huh. that equals. Uh, 14 years now. Since 2014, April. Okay. So it's nine and, and a half uh, years now. Uh, nearly 10 years. And I've been here for 16 years. I'm in Xi'an five years, but I'm in China for 23 years. Now. Oh, a long time. Wow. Beijing for eight and then Taipei for nine years. Wow. I've been in China over nine years now. Okay. I'm here from last 23 years. Uh, since 1996. Oh, a long time. A while. Wow. I've been here 14 years. So. Uh, just under a year. Now since the January 2020. If I could ask you to sort of summarize your life in China, please, what would you say? Uh, came here to teach English, learned Chinese, uh, got married here, and now this is my life in China. Okay. I came here for a year and I stayed for 23. So that tells a story, right? It's great, it's the people. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah? <laughs> 23 years, no regrets. <laughs> Pretty much is like my second home, you know. I mean, if I'm in India uh, and staying there a little longer, I always miss to come back. I like it. I've been here 14 years, so I really oh, wow. enjoy it. It's a, it's a really exciting place to be. It's different every day. It uh -huh. moves at an incredible speed. 14 years, the development I've seen is unbelievable. Oh, it's uh, full of opportunities. Great friends and good times. It's the most amazing experience of my life. Uh, I couldn't think of a better place to live. It's highly enjoyable, uh, but tricky. Better than back home? Every day is an adventure. Way different than everybody else thinks it is, because it's fantastic in China. This is the land of opportunity. And would you say you're happy here? Very happy, yeah. Wow. Wouldn't have stayed this long if I wasn't. I'm very, very happy. I hope I can stay here for a long, long time. Yeah. That's my wife, great. My wife hopes so too. Totally happy. Do you say generally you're happy living in yeah, China? Yeah, I have a great time in China. Yeah. yeah, I'm actually enjoying it. I'm very surprised how much I'm enjoying it. Yeah. So. Absolutely, yeah. Very okay, happy. thank you. Yes, for sure. Good. For sure, this is home. If I'm happy in China, I love it here. Absolutely. Brilliant. Yeah. And you know, we're, we're well looked after. It's a good life. Oh, absolutely, yes. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Take care. I love living here. I love everything about it. It's, uh, it's, it's been a great, an unbelievable time. How would you sum up your life here? Living the dream. Yeah? <laughs> living the dream. So, who are all these guys that I've been talking to? Well, they're all involved in the Nine Rivers Distillery Project that was born out of whiskey networking events in cities all over China. The same whiskey lovers who used to meet up once a month to share whiskey and conversation decided to explore the challenges of building a whiskey distillery. That was back in 2016 and here they are in 2023 not only putting that whiskey fuel wistful thinking into reality, but doing it on a size and scale that just hasn't been seen before in a startup distillery. It will eventually have a production capacity of around 70 million bottles a year. Stephen, we actually have a construction. There's also another gentleman over there with his iPhone. Hey, say hello to everyone. Hey. So this is the project manager for Rongqiang Construction. And then just over here in the yellow helmet, say hello. So this is the quality inspection manager. So he's the guy that's an independent third party that makes sure that everything Rongqiang are doing are up to standards and up to everything that's relevant. So, well done, all three of you. Thank you. Cheers. Let's go. Building three. This is the cool shoot. We got some walls here to hide off some really boring shit, so behind that wall there's some MEP stuff going on. Underneath here will be some chillers and shit like that. But the idea is that people will come in, you'll see two staircases here behind you. These are accessible from the outside, people will come up the staircase, which is where we'll have the plenum wall, and they'll get up here to this mezzanine level. And the mezzanine level is where people can safely view essentially the beating hearts of the distillery, 
but without getting into trouble. Because two six, well, three six, kind of. Come on, Leonardi. Go, go, go. And you'll see what will be the plan of war. Coming together. It's only that field, Jay. This is a really proud moment for us because we get to stick our names on bricks in a project we've all been working on for so long now. It's a fantastic sense of achievement. Brilliant.